I have been uh, I've been just sitting here looking at some of the comments that are coming down in social media uh, since about mid afternoon yesterday when Idaho Governor Butch Otter got on board with two dozen other governors around the country and said that Idaho at this point didn't want any more Syrian refugees because of concerns about the, the vetting process, which we've talked about to some degree on this program over the course of the last eight months, I guess it's been, since the story first broke, that some of those people would be resettled here in this community and throughout the Magic Valley. The governor, though, is getting criticized by a great many people who say that he isn't strong enough in his statement. Now, when I first saw the the initial coverage of it was popping up from different uh, radio and TV stations all over the Northwest that were picking up on his news release, and many of them, for space reasons, had edited it down, uh, and I wasn't clear on that. But when I did read it, the governor did say that he will do everything in his power to stop this program uh, legally within his power. I, I guess he hasn't crossed into illegal territory yet. It's uh, coming up on eight minutes after nine o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Steve Millington coming up. Uh, and at 8 30, we also have some guests coming by from, I believe it's Emmanuel Lutheran Church, talking about a fundraiser with us in a few minutes as well. And then Grant Loeb's, uh, County Prosecutor Grant Loeb's in studio with us in hour number two of the program. But here's the thing. The governor's comments exactly match those of Florida Governor Rick Scott. I saw Rick Scott's comments uh, yesterday afternoon, and Scott was pointing out that the governors at this point don't really know if they can stop the program. So you can make a strong statement and say you will do everything within your power. Uh, You could perhaps do what San Francisco does, where they nullify... Uh, They nullify immigration law, except, of course, the federal government doesn't prosecute anyone in San Francisco because the federal government, the current occupant of the White House, he he goes along with what San Francisco was doing, and that's nullifying those laws. So they're very selective in Washington about who they choose to go after and what laws they choose to actually enforce. So bringing all of that to play, bringing all of that to play, your own congressional delegation has gotten on board. And that includes uh, Raul Labrador, Mike Simpson, Mike Crapo, and Jim Risch. And they all say that they are going to be working in Congress because here's the, the, the nub of all of this. Rick Scott was right. Governor Otter was following his lead. What needs to change is the federal law. And for the last 35 years, federal law has said it's up to the president, that the president controls where these refugees go. Now, there's some more interesting uh, aspects of all of this. For some reason, Wyoming has been able to opt out of this program since the very beginning. I don't know what exception there was or how this worked out at the time. And then you have neighboring states. Uh, The Democrat who's the governor of Montana said no one has ever even tried to resettle any refugees there. So he said, I don't have a policy right now. The governor of Alaska said the same thing. The governor of South Dakota said the same thing. So you have some governors, and you've got Governor Herbert down in Utah. Governor Herbert says pretty much the same thing. No one is actually pushing anybody uh, on him at this moment, so he's 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 not coming up with any objections, but he may. And Governor Sandoval in Nevada apparently hasn't been asked about it yet. Don't know. He must be away on vacation, you know, hiking the Appalachian Trail or something along those lines. But he has not been available for any any input on all of this. I share all of that because sometimes it it, it strikes me that when when Governor Otter does something that we would like him to do. it's not very nice to turn around and then keep punching him (laughs) because at the moment, and he said it a few weeks ago on this very program, and apparently it didn't get picked up by a lot of people, but he was on this show last month and I asked him about it and he said, yes, I think we should be suspending this program. But again, he has to go to the congressional delegation to push them to do it and they have to round up the votes in Washington. The problem is Paul Ryan says we may do it. Paul Ryan isn't saying we will do it. Paul Ryan is saying we may do it. So that's, That's where we happen to stand in all of this. On the other hand, when the governor says these people aren't welcome here at the moment, he doesn't mean it in a mean-spirited way. Again, he's just saying we need to make sure that these people are going to be okay. And after what happened in Paris, there's a lot of nervousness around the world because of all of this. None of that is, is unjustified. I think the Wall Street Journal summed it up very well in an editorial today. The journal saying that the journal supports bringing people here. And it says the American people have always been very gracious about allowing these people to come from all around the world. And they cited some of the people who came here after the Vietnam War, many of whom were allied with this country. And because of their, the fact that they were allied with the USA, their lives were in danger. So we resettled them here. Vietnamese, uh, Laotians, uh, the Hmong, 
Uh, many of these people have come here simply because of that reason, because their safety was in jeopardy. Iraqis, the same way. Chaldeans, especially in Iraq, who've happened to flee here. However, the writer at the Wall Street Journal makes an excellent point. The writer goes on to say this, and, and, and you've, got to, you've got to follow me through on this, because even those of you out there who say, oh, we're not that kind of people, I keep hearing that. The writer says, those people, the Hmong didn't come here. The Laotians didn't come here with an intent to, to attack us. And even if it's only a small fraction of Syrians, and a small tiny fraction, as we saw, it only took eight people to, to kill 130 and injure 350 the other night, and the death toll will go higher. You don't need many people to cause problems. Already, one of the refugees who was dropped off in Louisiana has gone AWOL. Nobody knows where he is. Now he's just one guy. But if he comes along a, a, you know, a stash of firearms somewhere, he, that one guy could be extremely, extremely dangerous. It's 813. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And the writer at the Wall Street Journal says the people in government who are still pushing this program don't seem to understand. The average American who has those safety concerns doesn't want that threat living next door. But that's, a, that's irrelevant to the tone-deaf people in Washington, such as the Vice President of the United States, Joe Biden. We didn't do it after 9-11. We didn't do it after the, the Boston Marathon. We've never done it in every other occasion that's occurred. The moment we give in and change anything about the openness of our society is the moment they win. Um, and we cannot let that happen. So they win if, if we don't allow them to send terrorists, uh, you know, hiding amongst the other refugees. How is that, Mr. Vice President? <laughs> Just the convoluted logic. Yeah, it's all very flowery language, but there's, there's nothing evidentiary here. You're just, you're just spouting off. I mean, it's bromides, it's, it's, it, and that's all it is, window dressing. It's nothing more than that. You can reach our program today by giving me a telephone call. You can shout at me, too, if you like, 736 300 that is 736-0300. Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. And of course, you can also email me at bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. That's bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. Now, you've got a lot of people out there who are apparently now channeling the American people. Even over at the Clinton News Network, CNN's Jim Acosta, yesterday, talking with the president during the president's news conference at the G20 summit. Jim Acosta. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, I wanted to go back to something that you said to uh, Margaret earlier mm -hmm. when you said that you have not underestimated ISIS's mm -hmm. abilities. Uh, this is an organization that you once described as a JV team uh, that evolved into a force that has now occupied territory in Iraq and Syria mm -hmm. and is now able to use that safe haven to launch attacks in other parts of the world. Mm. How, is, how is that not underestimating their capabilities and, and how is that contained, quite frankly? And I think a lot of Americans have this frustration that they see that the United States has the greatest military in the world. It has the backing of nearly every other country in the world when it comes to taking on ISIS. And I, I guess the question is, and if you'll forgive the language, it, is why can't we take out these bastards? Well, Jim, I just, I just spent uh, the last three questions answering that very question. Uh, so I don't know what, what more you want me to add. <laughs> don't trouble me with that. Don't trouble me with what the people I, uh, that I represent, that I serve. Don't trouble me with that at all. We have a caller joining us. You're up next, and you're on Top Story with Bill Colley. Go ahead. Bill, I'd like to thank you for being ahead of the curve on this thing and having the foresight to point out some of the inherent problems with bringing some of these refugees in. And I really believe your show and your discussion that you've had has helped uh, change some of the opinion of the people in southern Idaho and also helped uh, uh, Butch Otter form his opinion on what to do with this. Although his, his opinion hasn't really changed for the last month. Nobody was listening to him, though, a month ago when he said that. He's just repeating exactly what he said a month ago, just a little bit more of a formal news release this time around. Yes, but I'm sure that he's aware of uh, this has been a hot topic for on your show for... Uh, a couple months, a couple, three months, actually. I've been listening to you uh, point out these uh, uh, risks and the things that are inherent in this program, this refugee program, for quite a while, and I'm sure that that gets back to him and, and lets him know that uh, 
we really aren't supporting this down here, and he's okay to go ahead and step out and be ahead of the curve on it. Well, thank you much for the telephone call, and thank you for the compliments. I just, I think that all the criticism that people were opposed to this because they were, they were racist or they, they, they were bigoted, I think all of that died out, and I'll tell you why. I think it died out in a matter of a few hours Friday night. And then we didn't look so stark raving mad, did we? It's 817. You're up next, and you're on the air on News Radio 1310 KLIX. Yeah, yesterday uh, I called the governor's office first thing, and uh, as I was speaking to the secretary, I said, am I the only one who's called in? And she said, absolutely not, sir. The phones have been hot. And so this is a good thing. So yesterday I called ZZ over at the refugee center. ZZ, I forget his last name, at the refugee center, and I left a message. He wasn't offensive or anything. I just want him to explain to me more about what they intend to do. I well, have not heard back. In ZZ's case, of course, this could it's not going to put the refugee program out of business. It's just going to either it's going to suspend it from one particular corner of the world. Number two, he's an exceptionally bright man. He could always find another job. That's not going to be difficult for him. But the fact is it, 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 we're only talking about one small area. No one is going to be stopping refugees coming in from other parts of the world. He's still got a job. He's still going to be a very busy guy. Yes, and I'm, this is no disrespect to him, and I called Jeff Fox, but my point is, and he hasn't called back either, and uh, sure they, I'm sure they're they busy. I'm sure that this thing, uh, this, think about this. Eight months ago, or, you know, this w w issue wasn't even at the top of the mind of the people of, of southern Idaho, but it is now. Sure but is. thank God. Think about how important it is that we were informed to the, as best as we could be by this program and others, and that, that, the, that the, the crap coming out of that paper, uh, that we weren't fooled by that, I, at least right, I hope so. But you well, see, ultimately, this is a good thing. The people have spoken, the governor reacted, and we're waiting for our local officials here to do the same. And we might hear from one of them tomorrow morning, about uh, 9 o'clock on the program. Thank you much for the call. want to remind folks very quickly, we've been telling you for several months as well about Tint Lady, uh, where they actually come by, do a free estimate, and they put in window tits in your home, your office, your automobile, and they do paint protection as well. One of the reasons we've been recommending them, of course, was to keep your home cooler in the, uh, without, without having the AC run over time during the summer. But during the winter months, remember these window tints also cut down on all of that UV radiation coming through the windows. And that has a terrible bleaching effect, which means, of course, your valuables will last longer because they won't have as much sun exposure. You can call and schedule an appointment at 736-8469 or online at tintladyidaho.com. They've been in business almost 25 years. 1887 Highland Avenue, East in Twin Falls, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And remember, don't squint, get tint.